All right. Actually, we can start. Uh, the quick survey at the start. Anybody is using the telemetry for work or uh, at all measuring some things, uh, doing some work on the performance monitoring of the servers. All right. That's not too many people. That's great. Actually, the presentation half would be all about introduction to the telemetry. And to some part, actually, how we can get into real, you know, work that you can do on the data sets from the telemetry. But previously, uh, I seen that the many people, even uh, DevOps or just like uh, people who were uh, system administrator, don't know too much about the telemetry, and they are just like, you know, very do the basic things. But actually, lots of the, the basic things they will not get anywhere using, you know, just like a basic tools. Because probably you will be, you know, monitoring the unnecessary things, and sometimes you will monitor the things that are uh, really not important for your uh, for, for, for system performance, and especially for the for the for, for the cloud or workload performance. And all right, start it off for start. Sorry, uh, that is a part of the work. This is. Like a disclaimer, that's uh, it's an Intel logo and trademark for Intel Corporation. All right, actually, for who am I? Who am I? I'm researcher on the one of the uh, H2020 Michelangelo project, and and also I'm a cloud engineer. Um, my work is mostly around the telemetry, some telemetry tools and the cloud software, some management software for cloud, especially for the scheduling and also some visualization. Previously, I uh, was working around lots of the, I was doing lots of the system engineering and system development for the few uh, bigger and smaller uh, uh, cloud providers, but also uh, was doing a lot of the stuff around the automation, DevOps, and all of that stuff. And, yeah, and later on, I just like moved mostly on for the, looking at the performance of the system and how to get get her the the probes and how to measure and you know and after all how to actually get something from the probes because it's 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 not a really easy work and it, it, it can be done sometimes very easily and what we're going to talk about is mostly we will talk some about the system before the cloud and system now and we take a look some on the telemetry. What is this about? And the telemetry on the cloud, that it's more like the complication of the, of the normal telemetry, because it includes uh, telemetry of the many layers of the cloud. We will talk also about the metric aggregation, which is the one of the key things actually right now to get her something meaningful from the telemetry. And we talk just a little about the anomaly detection, and also on the on the edge devices, and also on the on, on the on, on, on the endpoints or just like on the on the big data, and we will also talk a little about the closing loop and how to use uh, all the telemetry and how to influence you know all other software to use the telemetry data for the, uh, as an input for, for cloud management and some Q&A. If something will be not, you know, understandable, just like a raise a hand and we can, you know, talk more about some things that you will see uh, on the screen. Actually, yeah, we should start from the system, how, uh, how they are and most of the system before the cloud they were just like a normal monolithic and sealed on multi-threaded application. Uh, if you look at the uh, lots of the lots of the application that were just like a m one big system, and you will not see uh, you will see just like a very big blob of the data, and the even in the application application were not divided, you know, to do specific work. Mostly, uh, everything was uh, w was done around the 
uh, around the one thread because the, the old system, they don't care too much about the thread and later on they introduce the threading and most of the enterprise application and also uh, just like a business application, they never, uh, later on they added multi-threading to these applications. Even, even big for the big system like HPC, there, there was no nothing. All, everything was done in a parallel, and at all. And at this time, there was applications were deployed on the one more and multiple servers. There was no typical dependencies for the for the, and there was no typical server chain that's like we have now. Uh, the problem it was. Mm, mostly because every application was deployed on the different server. There were very rarely people were deploying serv you know, instances of, of the application on the few on, on the on the one server. They were deploying everything, but the system were mostly unutilized. Uh, you will not you know probably you were paying a lot at this time and you will not get you know any money from from the soft uh, from uh, for, for from the you spent a lot of money, but the income will be, you know, not the same like right now. And uh, most of the application they were also deployed, even for the for the uh, for the mail application. That is a great example. Just like even for when you're looking at the Microsoft applications, or even for the big Postfix application, everything was deployed on the one server. And of course, this derived to the high maintenance cost, and there is nothing more uh, than uh, everything was uh, much simpler. But actually, they were not, you know, great because the most of the server were underutilized. Later on, and when the virtualization arrived on the on on the on the si on the servers, uh, we started to look at the cloud system, what were at the start, they started to be multi-threaded in concurrency application. Of course, not at the start, because the problem was just like everybody was trying to push the old monolithic application to the cloud, mm -hmm. and still the problem exists, just like most of the, lots of the people when the KVM arrived or Zen arrived, they were trying to put everything just like a database on the cloud, which was not great, which has never been a great idea for that, and but that's okay. And another thing that was uh, on the cloud, you have a big work of the de dependencies. That is really big chain. Sometimes you're deploying for the one application, you're deploying 100 instances of the different of different things. And of course, this uh, goes up to the micro servers services and. At the end, the multi-instance application deployed across the servers. Uh, when uh, we start connecting the servers and using the virtual networks, right now the, the, the still the telco, which we start talking about the telco clouds, we just most of the hardware appliances implemented as a row of the cloud. You ha right now we have a lots of the the telco is looking at the you know, deploy the switchers, routers, and the firewall also VPN at the endpoints when this is possible and uh, they want to replace the hardware switches or hardware routers using just the software. Uh, there was a, you know, a few years ago that was actually not possible to, you know, to do that because uh, most of the most of the telco, they don't want to do that. The problem was mostly because they were not stable. Right now, most of the cloud technologies is stable and uh, and it's possible to deploy all the across the software and have a really stable thing. And what this comes with the cloud, it was a lower maintenance cost. And some of the stacks they were not, you know, they were when they're move to the public cloud when the security is not a big issue. Because of the many dependencies on the cloud and because
because of the of the lots of the problems and multiple layers when you have uh, your hardware devices on the on this and also the software and on the top of that you have virtual networks on the open switch on the top of that you have open start kvm and all of that are cl cloud became a complicated system uh, it's right now it's even more complicated when you're looking at the, at the other devices especially for the kubernetes because actually the kubernetes is not the fully answer you need to integrate lots of the other things and the problem uh, another one there's no you know a, there's no uh, virtualized networks there is a calico which is not a fully answer there's no integration on open and this which this probably in the future became uh, the standard for for the cloud then it's going to be really complicated from the simple start you all of the software became a really complicated system but that's okay there is no possibilities to uh, you know to maintain the system without uh, uh, big dependencies on uh, on other software uh, but the pr cloud is complicated but uh, it's possible to resolve the problem actually for the most of the you know the problems for the it's 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 the monitoring it's to gather telemetry and when you get the telemetry and the part data or the data sets, uh, you will get, uh, you will find that the cloud is easy. What is actually telemetry? Uh, it's, a, it's a way to process uh, measurements of, of the data collected from the remote points and transmit it up to the uh, up to the up to the database or up to the uh, to the to the any any uh, any storage when you can then you can parse the data do something with it and with it's it, it, it's the way how you uh, how you can m you know manage the cloud and how you can uh, how do you manage the cloud? Yeah, that's correct. Sorry for that, I have a little bit jet lag, <laughs> still. <laughs> and, all right. There is a little bit difference because when I started and uh, where, is, uh, where this is, I started doing uh, telemetry things when cloud never exists, it doesn't exist at this time and uh, the, the, the normal telemetry was really simple. I mean, just like uh, you were installed the collect D on the host, and actually you were just like sending the probes because you have, even you, you start managing 100 servers, that well, it's not uh, a lot because the uh, everything was a static. That was very, e very easy to manage. Right now, when everything is moving, you are spawning a lot of the instances, you have w way more data to collect that's for sure. Previously, there's a normal thing was when you are collecting, monitoring data from the normal static services, you don't need to do it very often. You can probe your data, you know, your servers every 10 seconds, every 50, 30 seconds, because probably most of the data is, is useless. And here right now, when everything is moving and everything, you know, you have most of the data centers have a contact to the internet, you need to monitor much often. And you need to probe much often. Then it's going, you know, it's huge. And another thing that there is a, which, which become a problem that is, it's big correlation between application and management software. Then you also need to gather more probes because you have a lot of different managed layer we need to get a probes from the hardware device up to the up to the your workload and yeah and also this goes to the that data needs to be highly aggregated because data collected from the one system you know this is it's, it's very large it's for for the normal for the normal uh, data that you start collecting from the just here is a 
50 VMs were collect you were collect the one gigabit per uh, per hours for the, for the few servers. That means when you are collecting from the way more servers, this data becomes the problem. Here, when you starting also collecting data from the logs and another, it could be 20 gigabytes per hour. And another thing is that uh, right now the cloud is moving also to the different direction when you will have more edge devices, when you will have, uh, you know, lots of the IOTs and it starting needs to be a requirement to monitor those devices, then the cloud, the, those IOT devices becomes the cloud. And you will need to start monitoring way, may of the way of more often and you will get a lot of the problems. And of course, another thing that you need to monitor and this is different than thought, you have uh, lots of the management software. From the deployment, up to the from the DevOps things up to the OpenBSV Kubernetes or the Mesos, they are producing a lot of the data, and all of the data, especially from the schedulers, are really important because this is how you can you know get the. But everything could be managed uh, at the start uh, when uh, the cloud were starting. There's there is uh, probably only a few. Uh, software that can gather a data from the from fr from the from the Linux. There was a Collect D. There was a also Ganglia or a few others, but they were never created for the cloud. Nobody were thinking at the start when they were starting from the Collect D or from from the Ganglia or any other systems. There is a plenty of them at this stage. They were very simple to get the metrics from the, from the, they were not easy to manage because lots of them, they were configurable through the config files, which is really hard to, you know, to manage and especially when everything is changing on the cloud. Then uh, we starting to look at the, uh, at the possibilities, how to, uh, how to gather the data from the cloud. And we said, we were looking at the one of the, our department that start doing a lot of the things around the telemetry and they introduced the SNAP, which is the, for us, there was the answer for the problems of gathering telemetry from the cloud. Uh, the idea was a simple and you have divided uh, the framework, which is the SNAP, <coughs> for the three things. One is uh, for collection, which is nothing than more than probably open the file, parse the file, and send to the, you know, uh, and, re uh, and I create the object, and or just like a get the data from the, uh, from the API or from the hardware device through the API, and Later on, because on the on the on the, on the serve, uh, you you will collect a lot of the data. The best thing actually for for doing that is to process the data directly on the server, because lots of the data are useless, and sometimes you don't need to collect as much as you get rid of the data. But this will be a part of the of the talk later on. Or you want to decorate the data because you are, you know, for the every client, for every uh, every VM, you want to put a specific context, the context into the probe. This is how you can you reuse this data and how you can uh, uh, get get the later data from the publisher. And at the end, of course, you want to publish the data. Because there is no one way to the publish, because some of the data you want to get directly to the, you know, to the visualization, you have to visualize, because you have people who are looking at the monitors all the time, or some of the data needs to be stored in the short term database, just for the few days, but you want to also sort some of the data on the, for the, on the long term database. This data is mostly highly aggregated because it's not possible, not just like that, except for the future analyzers for the big data storage. This is, and 
because the previous previous systems they don't have any specific uh, cloud management things they introduce uh, also the concept of the tribe then you can manage by the one uh, snap instance they can manage all others and you don't need to you know reconfigure you can do it on the fly very easily and we find it for the our work we find it that is actually really really useful and but actually what is really important to collect from from the server what is actually uh, very useful to collect because there is a uh, many subsystem of the app of, 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 of on the computer there's a very sub uh, mo lots of subsystem on the Linux but there's no one way of to collect them and there's no uh, and most of but most of the workloads the most you the using the same subsystems and because we will be talking mostly about the uh, x86 processors and the compatible processors but all other processors that are working mostly the same including the power pc or including the arm devices they are right now they're mostly the same and they are using the same techniques to 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 propagate. I mean th the first thing is a CPU. And everybody knows the CPU but <coughs> lots of the people get when they get into the data they are not really uh, getting the proper things. And there is a few things because the CPU is uh, actually the one of the biggest things on your server and because it's actually it's interacting <coughs> with uh, every device, nearly every device on your system, it's the key element of the every every system. And what you should monitor it's for sure the <coughs> for the for the Intel system is for sure L2 L3 cache usage, which is very important for your workloads because some lots of the workloads, especially databases or uh, man cache D or any other will be start using a 2 L3 cache usage which can cause the problems for the other software and also <coughs> it's uh, one of the biggest uh, problems for the, uh, for also for the multi tenants uh, system when you have uh, multiple VMs and they can Easily, you know, start utilizing system because they're starting using, especially L3 cache. And another thing is the uh, amount of the time that they were spent performing uh, work. And this is uh, mostly for the normal and nice and for the user. This is a uh, very important. Another thing that is a key element is a, uh, especially this one is the amount of time waiting for the IO to complete because. There is no simple way to manage the, uh, most of the time the CPU will be managing I.O. especially for the, some of the workloads then it's the one of the, of the key metrics and another time it's, it's of course the, all the uh, interrupts and soft IO crews uh, especially <coughs> the comparing with the, with the GeForce which is the time when your CPU is spending on the ticks every time when peak then you have uh, all the interrupts what is soft IRQ? soft IRQ is a soft IRQ when you have a normal IRQ you have also on the Linux system you have also soft IRQ they manage only by the Linux I'm, I'm sorry I don't <laughs> understand IRQ is interrupt request interrupt request, request. they uh, have interrupt okay. on every time in, in um, your by GPU oh sorry yeah, go ahead. Uh, so are, are these metrics being uh, obtained from the operating system? Or uh, they are exposed on the Linux subs uh, system, okay. yeah. but they come all of them. They comes from the hardware. Right, right, right. But right, because right. they are abstracted on the kernel, sure, you can easily gather them. And actually, most of them they're available on the on the one file. Yeah. And it's the way. Just like you can, you need what you need to do is just parse it. And this is already done because you can just like load one of these plugins and your work is done but you will yeah uh, so another question um does it for instance uh i haven't looked at the code so 
Um, does it break down the soft IRQs by like who's using the soft IRQs? Or it's possible. Okay. And you 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 can you can reuse on the some of the metrics, but to see who is using the IRQs, really, you need to start uh, getting data from the perp. Yeah. And or you need to use the there is a things that comes with the newer kernels, which is the his triggers. Mm -hmm. Then you can easily debug the data uh, very easily. You know, to create the trap, mm -hmm. and then very easily dump what actually were used, which system call were used. Uh, to get deeper, you need to you know. Yes. Are you gathering the same information from like a VM as from a container? Yes, you can get them. Oh. And especially for the LQ, L3, there is a very easy possibility. Probably you will need to use the perf to get this data. And it's this data is accessible. Oh. You can also get some of this data from the C groups. Then they are, uh, they are available as, a, as, a de as default on, on, on Berg. We, we have also the collector for these groups. Th there is a plenty of things that you can do and you can easily you know, manage and look at the stack. And here you can see how everything is connected because right now most of the modern systems, they have a CPU and a cache. And as the few years ago, there most of the modern systems, they, they have also human nodes and everything is here connected and actually it's everything is connected to the CPU and <coughs> the interconnect. That's everything. What's happening here? It's going also through CPU. Then it's the one of the of the of the key system. Um, for the memory, for the for the memory key metrics, that it's mostly uh, it's active and the swap space. But you were looking for, especially the key things are. It depends what you are looking for. For the for the bottleneck is a swap in and swap out. When you start can see start seeing the saturation of the memory, especially it's very important for the VM when you are uh, you are over committing your memory and you are using the balloon balloon um, a driver. Another thing is the huge phases because. Most of the modern systems are the using the huge phases. It's also available for the any BSD or anything. Then you have a huge, you know, the memory is allocated differently. You are also need to monitor this. If actually one of your workloads, it's not consuming a lot of the huge phases because it's become a, it can become a bottleneck for your system. And of course, uh, hardware corruption for the SEC. It's it's good to take a look at this on the server, and the power consumption and the temper temperature. It's actually the same for the for the CPU. It's for the for the some of the system, uh, especially it's temperature for the for the ARM devices or even for the few of the older uh, Intel CPUs that could be a key element, especially when you're looking at the performance of the databases or uh, bigger schedulers like a Spark or something. That is the one of the key metrics. And yeah, you can also gather using the uh, the snap. You can you have uh, two models that can gather the memory. Which one is the memory info? And the second is the PSU here. And you can gather those metrics from from here. And because the memory is highly connected with uh, with the, with the CPU. And it's 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 very important to monitor and and check the data from the CPU and memory because lots of the application you start you when you start using an allocated memory when you start using the CPUs and especially where everything could be copied through the L2 L or L3 cache, which can become also a bottleneck. Mm, another system as is a disk is the one of the uh, really tricky sy trap systems and what is actually tricky because uh, most of the devices are highly abstracted and especially on the servers when you 
on the normal hard drive, when you are exposing through the, through the through the everything would be okay and highly measurable. But most of the systems that start they have hardware drives. They were exposed as a virtual drives, and actually, some of these metrics visible from the Linux device will not be uh, actually applicable and will be very tricky to read the data from them. That is the one of the things. That's why the, the, the su this subsystem, it can be really easy measurable, but if you, you need to read the data on your own and you know, to check the system, because on Linux is not aware what you have on on your server, and you, you will need you he don't know actually. It's your right controller have five disk or six disk, and you will start to see that the it's disk is spending on the I/O more than it's possible on the most of the system, which is not true, <laughs> of course. Then you need always reading those numbers. You need to be aware what you have on your system. But there is a plenty of the things. Uh, the, all of these are very, very uh, easy to understand. And actually, one of the things uh, is, is white and tile time. <laughs> this is the one of the key metrics. Because it's when it's bigger than, uh, than time when you, uh, for, 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 for a read, it can be found that the disk is start to be saturated. And then you will have a lot of the problems on your on your disk. And also another thing is the pen interrupts which is more than this is possible to write, then you need to start tweaking your system. Of course, also most of the of the disk they have to expose lots of the smart statistics. They are really good and useful, but only when you are done when you know what actually you they are doing. Uh, also of course they we have available uh, few collectors for that. The first is a disk, which is just like uh, mostly based on the on the ProcFS. And another ta another thing is the IOSTAT, which is really useful uh, because you can get a real uh, utilization and the saturation for the device. Um, all right, and this is how connected. Actually. Disks are and or the right controller are mostly connected to the CPU and to the truth and the reading from the cache, but they don't have a big impact on the CPU. And especially on the cloud, when the most of the of of of, of the disk or on the VM where they will have uh, lots of the caches, then you will not see a big impact on it. And the uh, last one from the, from the from the from the hardware, they're for network devices. And here we can that it's very easy, but it's uh, by mostly what is incoming, what is outcome, what is uh, the same on the packets because you can have a different packet size, especially for the for the different application. Then you need to monitor carefully because uh, for the sound type of the transmission. It can also change the problem when you start seeing drop in or drop out for the UDP, especially for the sum of the servers. And you also need to take a look at the link errors when, but it's everything can be collected from the from the interface collector, and also. It's really good tool for that. For the you can, you can reuse the add tool, which will tell you more about the uh, about the uh, very low level uh, driver uh, driver features, and especially when you want to profile the system for the specific work. Just because most of the most of the of the modern mix they have. Uh, very lots of the offloading techniques and they can be configured in a specific way then this tool can tell you actually 
what actually is happening on the NIC and what is going on there. Maybe you can turn on some features that are available on the driver and the transmission can be in an even double. And this is actually how it's connected. And the most network controller, they are uh, causing a lot of the CPU and the, and the cache traffic, especially when on the high transmission. And especially when they start uh, utilizing a lot of the NIC, everything needs to be copied somehow to the, through the L2, L3 cache up to the CPU. And this also can become the bottleneck on the sum of the systems. And also another thing, it's uh, uh, not only the hardware, that was uh, only the part of the hardware what you can get collected. Another thing, actually, it's a very useful, is uh, of course collecting from the OS when you can get your data about your workloads. And because this is mostly all of, probably all of work on the cloud, all of work on the, on the every system, it's about the workloads. You want to run something, then you need to know how actually what your application is doing, not only how it's utilizing all of those devices, but actually what it's doing on the system, how they're allocating the RAM, and how uh, actually it's performing. Then you can get those information from, uh, then you need to collect information about the processes, and because ev and every process have, you can, you can get an information very easily about the how many uh, virtual RAM were used, or how many resident RAM RSS were used by the by the process. Of course, you could also get info for every time. This is very useful. The time spent in the user space, which is how application what was doing, how were processor was used. From the another from the part, you will also get the cache usage. This is a very useful thing because when you have a multiple application they can, um, they have access, the same access for the L2, L1 cache. And also another thing is a bit write and read because for the multiple applications, you will see that the applications, we will start writing and reading from the disk a lot. Then this is also another thing that you should take care of. And of course, another thing for the system, this is very rarely, but the, the sum of the zombie, what, what is happening there, we can see just like a lot of the zombie dead or waiting processes, but because this could happen because the um, scheduler or CPU, it's, it's highly utilized, and lots, there is a lot of the uh, processes that they're waiting for the waiting, which is of course bad or it can happen because one of your subsystem it's it's broken or just like it's 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 uh, it's corrupted <coughs> and yeah we can also have just like a few uh few collectors we can get the processes here from this you will get all this information about the every process on your system about the memory usage time spent and the and uh, uh, memory allocated. From here, you will get a lot, a lot, a lot of information about the cache missions, that they are really important things. And of course, another thing is most of the, app you will be, when you're using KVM or you are using the Docker, you also using the C groups. And this is the more important because this is the, way how to kernel isolate all the processes on your system then you need to care of because most of the C groups isolation there is a, you will say that you want to use only this amount of the memory and this can be easily consumed by your application or you will say that you want to use only half of the core that C groups will give you only the part of the core which is not you know enough for your application then it's a, uh, you know, there is a multiple way to, you know, to manage that, but to manage that, you need to collect this data. Then it's, it's, uh, no. Another thing is, of course, the file system. 
And oh, actually, this is very easy because they are highly abstracted. And you, what you will only see on the on the Linux level is mostly space user, space free, <laughs> or how was reserved. Of course, you need to take care because when you will see that this corrupted, you will see the loss of the errors on the syslog. And uh, this is the natural way how to you manage, you know, how to get all the data uh, from this. And you can get also from this from just loading this one of this plugin. Is it file system in one or three? Uh, no, it's mostly based on the idea when you or it's <coughs> then it's only seeing the what is mounted on your system. But there is no, you know, uh, everything is abstracted in the kernel. Then you will, you don't need to, you know, take care. And most of the file system that were, they they have the same functionalities. Then you need to, when you are using the other things, just like how you can start using ZFS or any others. Then you need to go through the really ZFS debugging or a specific metrics for every subsystem. But you know, this is probably. Uh, another talk for that two or three hours <laughs> on every because every subs uh, every file system can be different and have a uh, different uh, metrics. Just out of curiosity, uh, how hard is to write a new plugin? For uh, it's it's very easy actually. It's just like a three methods what we have. It's mostly just like a because for for this you need to run the comments or you can you need to read from the procfs. Then it's very easy. You need to check actually well for for the DF. You need to check what is mounted, what you are using, and then you know read the data from uh, from uh, from procfs. That's all what you need to do. And everything is the it's it's the file that you only reading the files. But we were talking mostly about the you know subsystem. They are very low level. And this is not everything what you you see are about that on, on 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 the servers. Another thing is just like a mostly management layer, and you need to also collect from the cloud. The cloud is mostly what we are understanding about the cloud is mostly management software, which is running on the cloud is managing all the VMs, KVMs, or all the disks. Then we can say that it's mostly about the cloud availability. And you want to get uh, lots of the data from the various cloud services, mostly errors and warnings, because all others are really not important. Or you can, you can, you, it's really important to get number of requests per service, user or tenant, because you, you can easily uh, utilize the server can the, the servers can be easily utilized only on the queries to the API, which was seen by me many times. And of course, you, can, you need to check the, all the components availability. If the old things are running, if they're not returning the errors. Also, which is really good, it's a micro benchmark or test uh, test of the cloud. Then, Especially the services which have uh, access to the to the to the to the disks, uh, where they are, they can be, um, you know, the disk can be used at many times. They can be fragmented, or anything. Then you should check your cloud for a few times per, you know, uh, per time to see uh, if if that cloud is available for you and it's possible to run, and it's you. If if the number that you start you know measure at the start is nearly the same, you know after a while, then you most of the things you will get from the logs of the OpenStack and also if it's from the Kubernetes you can get those data from the API. So this is processor, not selector. Right? Oh yes, Be okay, yeah, that's it, right. Uh, it's also there is a collector and a processor for that. There is a two things that you need to load actually to get this data from the uh, from the OpenStack. So do you usually uh, do you usually run collector on? Uh, no, you don't need actually. The processor is only to process this data uh -huh. because okay, you are collecting something. Oh, collect 
But you, sometimes you want to aggregate this number. Then you need to load the processor to aggregate, to get the aggregation uh, that you can send to the database. I just try to understand. So each collector must work don't need, You don't need to use the any processor, really. Oh, OK. <laughs> but the, you, you can collect and send directly to the database. But you have a, a way to choose. Because sometimes you want to aggregate the data. Sometimes you want to filter out some numbers because they are meaning not meaning data. meaningful. Mm -hmm. But it's it's up to you, really. And another thing, actually, about the, the cloud, it's not always because you are measuring clouds mostly at the at the start, and we are measuring the workload, what is happening on the on our servers out at the start. But later on, we are we also we need to be sure. That's everything. It's it, it's it, it's okay there. Then you need to also check the network and the cloud storage latency. And for that, you should uh, you should check the latency between the interfaces. It's it's very important actually because uh, for the especially for open the switch or any other, you will have you need to check the latency because you will see that's like sometimes when you are sending a lot of data, and actually you should you know, do something, you know, to offload the, the, the switches. And of course, latency between the external cloud components, because most of the data center, this is not only one data center, you probably want to have more data centers, mm -hmm. then you need to check the connection between them, because sometimes you need to migrate, or you have application on the different, on the different part of the company. And it's really, Important is for the for especially for the open stack is time span of the open switch process per config node because sometimes of the most of the network uh, workloads you will see that this time is really huge and the server can be easily uh, utilized or even saturated because of the of the open switch. Of course, if you you can also see. Check uh, out the open flow uh, per interface. There is no one way to measure latency. The easiest way is to use them just like a ping between the interfaces, but it's not the best way, that's for sure. Because for the latency, you need to send the real packets. Most of the ICMP packets on the most of the routers or the switches, they will be they will go through without the any processing on the switches because they will be at the first. They, they, they will be sent directly without uh, uh, any processing. And of course, on the cloud, you have probably right now FPGAs, accelerators, or sensors. Uh, but for them, it's mostly the temperature power or utilization. Temperature is very important, especially for the FPGAs or accelerators, because they can be easily, when specific workload is deployed on the FPGA, the, especially the RAM device can be uh, can can be uh, can have a really really peak temperature, but this depends on your workloads. We were talking a lot about the, all these components, but actually, um, the main thing is to process because gathering the data is very simple. And you were just collecting everything from from the from from the device and sending over, but not all the things are really, you know, just like I said before, not everything is important on this data, and not m most of the data is not really meaningful. What you will get, re you know, reading, you know, from the how much time I spent on the I/O. Actually, there is nothing because you need to aggregate this data to get some insights from it. That's uh, for, for this, a uh, few years ago, uh, Brandon Gregg come up with the idea of the simple, uh, simple aggregation of the metrics. And he come up with the USE method, which is really good when you want to look on the higher level of the, of, of the system. And this is the just methodology when you are want to analyzing the performance of the any system. 
and because it's they're using the metrics that are available on any Linux system, probably also he is talking more about uh, on also on the Sun, then you have a checklist which uh, you can very easily an analyze, even by your eyes, and you can get all this, uh, you can very quickly identify resource bottlenecks or errors based on the very simple aggregation. Just for example, for the second slide is actually, you will see just like a computabilization. It's nothing more than 100 minus idle time that is not spent on any, anything. Or the saturation, <coughs> it's a lot one per number of the CPU. This is actually not very accurate number, but we tell you something that there is something wrong on your system. The system is highly saturated or anything. Another thing is a disk utilization. This is a very simple number from the IOSTAT utilization. So you can get this number. Uh, if it's really high, if it's more close to the 100, then probably you have a problem on your system. Another thing is uh, saturation, which is average queue size on the IOSTAT. Then it's, uh, that means your system is saturated. It's really wrong. And of course, memory utilization is very simple, but the saturation is also very important thing, especially on the cloud system. You have this memory swapping and the swap out. And of course, the network utilization, when you're talking about the, what we receive and send divided by the bandwidth, and network saturation, when you have the uh, uh, packets received and overrun, <coughs> through the number of packets were sent through the interface. That means your network device was highly saturated. Using this, you can very easily create your uh, fully monitoring system because you, you, what you only need to do is collect the few information and using these simple formulas, you can get probably 80% information about your system. 24 more is probably root cause analysis, what is actually happening there. But from this, you will see, and you can trigger some actions. You can do actually lots of the, uh, lots of, uh, lots of the things. But this is not all what you can do on the data. Another thing is uh, anomaly detection. What is anomaly detection? It's mostly the outlier detection. This it means that you have a data, but not, not everything is okay with your data. That means there are some points that they are outliers from the data sets. And this can show you actually that something is happening with your system. Mostly, uh, mostly, uh, and typically, uh, anomaly detection uh, can be translated on the program. That means it could be a uh, software misconfiguration, this could be attack when you're seeing a lot of the L1 or L2 cache uh, read and writes. And yeah, or just like unexpected software behavior because someone is deploying the software, some DevOps uh, is deploying the software, and some developer change something in the software, it starts reading a lot of the disk on the one of the things. And you can easily see what, uh, uh, using the anomaly detection, what is happening and why. And uh, the simple anomaly detection, what we have, it's you and you can use, it's a two-key method. This is really simple formula. And using this, you can easily reduce the amount of the data that needs to be transmitted. And we, without any compromising any information, most of the data, it's when you're transmitting, the, what, what he's doing is looking at the specific, um, uh, what he's doing is actually looking at the data sets. And if something is out of the shape, then only transmitting this part of the data sets. And this could be e very easily configurable on your system. 
and we also have a plugin for that and you can load as a, as a one of the plugins and you can easily remove a lot of the unnecessary data from your uh, from your uh, from your work data sets another thing what we what come up and it's uh, it's uh, implementation of the seasonal hybrid ESD and yeah this is the more coming to the to the machine learning type of the of, of the plugin and it's really good because the previous one was mostly we can talk about the local anomalies it's really bad on the on the very big data sets and this one it's really great on the short term data sets so very short data sets and also for the uh, for the very long data sets just like for a week then you can see that all right something is happening every night about the two and actually this can you know you, you can see that someone is attacking your system and because we are using also some some other things you can easily see you, you can easily check why it is happening just like for the small things just like the previous the computer and also the second plugin can be used for for nearly the same you can see that like uh, for the one of the workload here is the utilization of the system and you can see just that on the one it's you are collecting 60 to uh, 623 pro uh, pro probes but at the end uh, by filtering they remove 89 and the shape is nearly preserved that's you don't and using you know the other techniques you can on on the same data sets you can apply the same techniques for for the future um work and of course but it's not everything you need to have also some other things you know to uh i think we are running out of time <laughs> You didn't do the publisher, right? Yes, that's what, <laughs> yeah, I will be talking now. And, yeah. To send the data, you need to have a highly scalable databases. And there are some databases that can be very easy to use. And they're named the PSDBs, when you can store your, they're only made for the one thing, to store the data probes. Uh, with the time stuff, but actually, and actually also with the, with the lots of the metadata, then you can store everything what you want. Just like here, utilization, you can see just like a utilization for the it was stored with the number of the which core was uh, is, 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 is utilized, and also with the with the which rack number you can you can do whatever you want to add, and also you can easily gather the data from the, this type of the databases. Uh, most of the, of the databases that can expose the data through the API or just like uh, this is uh, an example from InfluxDB. This is the one which we are using mostly right now. It's you, knowing just like a simple SQL, you can gather the data from the databases. There are a few implementation of the TSDB. The more popular right now is uh, InfluxDB. The second is uh, KairosDB, which can be really good for the for the Cassandra. And OpenDSDB, or very simple, is a graphite. It's mostly the the, the thing that you can get the data. And also lots of the data visualization software. I think I don't know if do you want should I continue or yes all right sorry for that I uh, I should talk less for sure <laughs> <laughs> anyway there's no one waiting outside <laughs> all right you have the last station yeah we probably four minutes some people want to listen is that okay <laughs> and for the data visualization I think there is a one thing that is uh, 
a very easy tool for the for the visualization and very simple to configure is a Grafana for that, and the second is a Kibana for the logs. But if you are going deeper on the system, you need to also take a look at the heat map. It's very easy to to to, to see, but you know to generate them and also I know that the, for the Grafana there are a few heat maps then you can see actually for your data center or for your few servers you can see the reallocation of the utilization very easily you know for the for the one things they can see just like when you specific time you have a higher utilization than the normal or whatever using you don't need to use any you know algorithms to, to see that on your eyes and another thing it's a very good thing but it's when you can see it's a plane graph and this is also done by the Brandon Gregg and this is when you want to debug your stack you can easily get at this data I mean and, and see actually what is happening with your application and you can log uh, the data from uh, uh, from just taken from the debugger and put this and you can easily see all right actually my application is screwed up in this thing because it's doing nothing by the long time and yeah I need to take a look at this and it's very easy you know take uh, using uh, the flame graphs to see where is the problem of your application on the loading or maybe on the some specific uh, uh, specific algorithms inside yeah and how it can be used like this when you can see very, you know, you can present very easily your uh, and visualize the monitoring. This is actually a screenshot from the Grafana when then you can easily, you know, put the data on the, on the screen and you can easily, you know, get some insights from your eyes. Yeah, but, you know, this, this is not enough probably, you know, to get on the insights from the, from, from, uh, from the visualization and it's good to uh, reuse this actually reuse this data for the other things then of course using the telemetry data what you can do is actually you can enhance the cloud scheduler and use it aggregated data for the wires on the open stack or you can easily implement this on the Kubernetes it's just like a few numbers then you can see I don't want to deploy there because this server is busy and I want to deploy there. You can you can do whatever you want based maybe on the network utilization or maybe on the other things which is m more important for you and which can be a bigger bottleneck for your data center. And yeah, you can also use the very easily uh, using machine learning algorithms on the data sets you can find the key metrics on the work for the workloads because sometimes you don't want to monitor you know 300 metrics from your stack sometimes actually your your workload is only using five metrics and they are very key important then using some very simple algorithms from the machine learning you can do that and later on you will just like uh, you, you only will need to configure and get the three metrics or four and that are important for your application and you can also profile your application oh, and then reuse the uh, continuous in, uh, integration for redeployment for us and yeah I can talk more but I think that it's enough about this and some of the tools actually were created using because we have uh, one of the research project and this is mostly involved of the cloud when we are trying to virtualize I.O. for the VR DMA and for HPC and lots of the software that we're talking about they were created on this project it's actually very interesting because a lot of the things they will come with a newer version of the KVM using this and you know, it's, it's hard to see because we are also using the, the few technologies that they are not very popular now and probably they will become the popular, especially for the I.O. virtualization. Is it all passive monitoring? So you have to look at it, or is there any push? So it's and most of are a passive because you know it's not possible. You know you can't tell your Linux box 
to send your list data. Well, but there's tools like Datadog, that tool Yeah, right. but Datadog is, yeah, you know. Yeah, they introduced the streaming now. Oh, the streaming, yeah, yeah. 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 all right, so that means, yes, yeah. th th this is possible. And then some of the programming already stuff for that. It's 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 not yet you know just like a data log it's it's highly complicated and you have uh, lots of the plugins and it's just like here you can actually using the some of the tools you can easily uh, copy the same idea and do the same things not paint anything. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, actually, I have a few gadgets and the swag if anybody wants to gather right here. Well, they're not too many, I mean, for sure not for everyone. 